Before the break, we asked what was ex-Labour Deputy Roy Hattersley replaced with on Have I Got News For You after failing to show up? Was it a wooden plank, a tub of lard, chocolate teapot? And the answer is a tub of lard. <laughs> I think, can we see a clip of this famous thing? Can we, can we see this? Come on. And uh, with Paul Merton this week, we were hoping to be joined by the Right Honourable Roy Hattersley, but sadly, and for the fir third time in our brief history, he's pulled out at the last minute due to having something better to do. So, uh, as his replacement, liable to give much the same performance, and imbued with many of the same qualities, we're delighted to welcome a tub of lard. <laughs> Oh, that, it's a famous... By the way, welcome yes. Paul Merton and Suki Webster. Hi. Hello. Uh, Hello. Great. It's such a famous uh, moment, that. It is, yes, yes. Uh, I was doing another TV show at the time of this, and the producer then at the time, Harry Thompson, phoned me up the day before and said, uh, Roy Hattersley is pulled out again. We're going to replace him with a tub of lard. Is that all right? I said, yeah, fine. Then put the phone down. Didn't think anything more about it until I got there and realised, yes, it was a tub of lard. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Hattersley, had, it was about the third time he'd agreed to do the show, and then the day before, I said, no, I'm not coming. Yeah. So that was, well, that the, was th the third time. The three strikes yeah. and you're out with that yes. stuff, isn't yes. it? Yes. Uh, uh, well, listen, let's talk about, uh, about you, you both, you're both comedians, real life couple. Yes. We've seen you motorhoming on Channel 5, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll come to that. Mm. But you're doing an improv show, Suki. Tell us about this. Yes. So we're starting a brand new residency at the Comedy Store beginning on March the 6th. And the format is we ask the audience to for certain things. We might say, can we have a household object? Or we might say, can we have a colour or whatever it is? Based on what they say, we just make stuff up. So there's no rehearsals, no cheat sheets, no safety net. You just do it. I always used to, when I used to watch Whose Line Is It Anyway, I thought, how are they doing this? And, they, you know, of course, as the viewer, you think they must have prepped, but no. No, no, no. I mean, I think it's sort of, I think people got used to the idea now, because Whose Line, when it first started back in the late 80s, the idea of improvisation in comedy was a fairly new idea. Although in America, it's been running a long time. But nobody says to jazz musicians or to footballers, you must have practiced that. <laughs> <laughs> we can, they, you can be spontaneous, but it's, it is, I remember the first time I saw it, and we had, uh, I was working with Mike Myers, who went on to do many great things in Hollywood, Austin Powers, etc. And his facility at it was so good that you just thought, this is impossible. I'm watching him do it, but this is impossible. Possible. But in the end, when you, through practice, through experience, you get to realise that actually, as a conversation is improvised, that's what we're doing now. We just put jokes in as we go along. Brilliant. Okay, well, we've got a clip of you two doing improv together. Can I have a colour, please? Indigo. How lovely. Indigo. Oh, darling, isn't the sea a beautiful colour? Yes, it is! <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Enjoying your honeymoon, darling? Yes, I am. Oh, this is one of the best honeymoons I've ever been on. <laughs> You're seventh, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, but I put this in the top five. <laughs> oh, I see you're straight there ahead of me every... I'm thinking indigo and I'm looking for... I can't... I wasn't even off the blocks there. <laughs> and you're straight there. It's amazing. So, um, do you not have moments where the, the whole... Th it just crashes? Well, I think... Um, sorry, do you, you want to... No, you have moments where people... Sort of, I haven't watched that clip, for, so I'd forgotten what was coming. So I had no idea Paul was going to suddenly say to me, honeymoon, he had no idea I was going to set it by the sea. So you're constantly surprising each other yeah. and constantly having to change direction. But no, it, if, you, if you don't think of anything, the other person will. You're always on stage with somebody else. Yeah. I mean, as that clip showed there, I was, I had, no, Suki said, hello, darling, whatever. Nobody got up until, the, oh, right, it's me then. So yeah. you get up and you, you start and then you chuck the honeymoon thing in and then, you know, you're probably thinking of, is there a joke about indigo? You know, there's a seat, indigo, you know, or whatever, <laughs> yes. you know. Um, That's where I thought we were going to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't end up going there. <laughs> is it true that in improvisation, you have to keep agreeing to things? Because if you kind of say no too often, you're stopping things. Is that true? About yeah, well, it is to a certain extent, but I think it's one of those things, as long as you know the rules, you can break them. Okay. Yeah. You know, and it's a principle rather than a rule. Yes, that's a good If I come yeah. in and say to you, oh, this is lovely green grocers, can I buy an apple? And you go, it's a doctor's. And I go, right, doctor, I've got a cough. No, you haven't. You've got a broken <laughs> leg. Yeah. It's kind yeah, that's of, the kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's not the best way to do no. it, I suppose. No, there is an agree, you know, but equally, but equally it's funny to say, no, this is a doctor. Yeah, you know, no, so, it is. Yeah. So you, you, as long as you know which rules you're breaking, then you can break them, I think. It's, it's, a, it's a residency indefinitely or how? how yeah, I think we're oh, there really? until they chuck us out, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're never I saw the Billy Joel, have you seen this? He's, he's done Madison Square Gardens and he said, I'm doing it every month until I, st until I have an empty seat. 
and he's done, I don't know, a thousand or something. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. So listen, I'm hoping you're still there in, in 20 years doing it. <laughs> well, so am I. <laughs> uh, motorhoming, we, we should have a look at the motorhoming show here because we've got some pictures of this. You going on, and we talked about this before last time you came in, yes, that's right. was a brilliant series. <laughs> and we're kind of hoping that Channel 5 say, do some more. Do you want to do some more? Oh, we'd love to yeah. do some more. Yeah. Yes, please, Channel 5. I mean, it was a sort of, it was a joy, really, because the way that we are on screen is more or less how we are in real life. Um, so it, it was just, uh, they'd stick a camera, a GoPro, like that you can see there, and just film us. And we, you forget you're being filmed. You just carry on the way you normally do. Because um, we are quite eccentric together. <laughs> There's a bit together, of improv, improv going on. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, that's where all those skills come in handy. That, that shirt, though, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, sure, I, I don't even notice it. Good. No. Um, it, it shows you how powerful that piece of television is. That you're <laughs> noticing the shirt. <laughs> yeah. Either that or you're very fashion conscious. Before we move on, oh, should, I don't think that's true. You should tell us about the Comedy Store and what it means to you. Because the Comedy oh, Store yes. is a massively important club to lots of people, but for you especially so. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I did my first stand-up gig there in 1982 and it went really well. I mean, it was only a five-minute thing, but it was the first time I'd ever done stand-up. And it's one thing to have the ambition, but you don't know until you actually do it whether you've got the temperament or the talent to do it. I might have stood on stage and frozen, you know. Um, before the comedy store opened in 79, I wanted to be a comedian when I was growing up. The only ways to get into comedy before the comedy store was to become a Butlin's Redcoat or another holiday camp sort of entertainer. Cambridge Footlights, that would have been no good for me. Or working men's clubs in the north. So so I was too southern, too stupid and too, <laughs> <laughs> and too miserable <laughs> to do any of those. With the open mic slots, that's how people start, right? That's it, yeah. And it just, I mean, we didn't know the phrase at the time, but it's stage time is essential because you can you can have an idea that's funny but until you try it out on an audience until you're in front of an audience you don't know mm. you don't know and many is the time when I was writing stand-up where I'd, I'd, I'd thought I'd write a really good joke and I'd do it and they just look at me and I'd realize I hadn't given them enough information yeah. it's a, it's an art you know you can give an audience too much information it becomes corny but if you give them just enough for them to make the leap from what you're saying to the punchline then it works better I love it and, and of course I don't know if you met that night but the comedy store is where you two met originally no, it was actually an identity parade wasn't it it was <laughs> <laughs> but at the comedy store. They sometimes double up as a police station. We don't know why. Yes, yeah, we did in the dressing was. room, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, years before we got together, we we actually met at a workshop. And mm. then we I started uh, working with Paul at the comedy store. And Paul was so shy. He never made any eye contact with me or spoke to me. So I just assumed he hated me and decided I didn't like him. And we spent years not speaking to each other. And then we went on tour together to India yes. and realised, oh, he's quite interesting and nice. Oh. And uh, so finally we got together after yes. years of avoiding each yes. other. So, yes, it was an identity parade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Thank you, guys. Um, stay with us. You can see Paul and Suki's improv show at the Comedy Store every Wednesday from the 6th of March until the year 2094. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there is the poster right there. Uh, so now I know you're a fan of the Beatles. Mm. We've given you this